In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at how to edit files using Linux. So if we're using Windows and we want to edit files, it's quite straightforward. There's lots of different programs that exist, like a Notepad and other different applications, a little bit like that, that we can use when we want to make changes. So if I'm using Windows and I'm looking through some files, I've got some here, look. Uh, I could go in this directory, maybe I want to edit this file. I can use a program like Notepad to be able to make a change to it. So in Notepad, here's some text, I can add more. And then once I'm done, I can save it. I could use the keyboard if I wanted to, couldn't I? Control S. Uh, I could save that, and that's then change the contents of that file. When we're using Linux and we're doing it from the terminal, there's a different set of tools that are available to help us to be able to achieve that. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. And there's a few different text editors that you can use. Now, one of the easiest ones to use is this one here called Nano. There's another one called Vim, which is very popular. There's one called Emacs, which I personally like a lot. And there's several others. So what we're going to look at, learn about today is the one that I like to use, which is one called Emacs. Now, I must confess, uh, on the face of things, it probably looks a little bit daunting, but I do promise I've used this a lot. And once you get used to it, it's a very, very fast way of being able to edit text and to do document that uh, make changes to documents. When I use this, I think I'm probably a lot faster at editing files using Emacs than I am, for example, using something like Microsoft Word. And you'll see why in a second. You will need a bit of a memory to be able to do this, but you've only got to be able to remember a few of these keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to show you in order to be able to get this working. So what I need you to do first of all then is to load up a terminal like we've got just here and in order to get the terminal up you'll either be able to use, oh, well you can't use the web browser so what you'll have to use is the virtual machine that's on your desktop okay now I'm not going to make a tutorial for doing that but if you look on your desktop you'll see an icon that says Ubuntu, that's Linux, you'll be able to log into that just like you normally do uh, and then after a little while what you'll be able to do uh, is to find a terminal window. Your teacher will help you do that in the lesson. Once you've got your terminal window open like this, this terminal is controlling that virtual machine, that, uh, that, electro that computer that you're currently sat at. But where Linux becomes really powerful is the ability to control other machines anywhere in the world. And as it happens, here at school, what we've got is we've created uh, a web server that deals out web pages. And you've got some web space that you can use to view your own web pages on. So we're going to use those as a vehicle to edit files. As soon as you logged on the computer, type in the following thing. You're going to type in SSH, which is short for Secure Shell, by the way. Then type in your network username, so mine's STSB11. Uh, then type an at symbol. And then type in student web. A little bit like this. And hit enter. Um, it might prompt you, since it's the first time you've ever done it before, it might prompt you with a yes-no question. Uh, if it does that, just type in the word yes, Y-E-S. You can't just type you, you've got to type in yes and hit enter, and then it'll prompt you for your password. So I'm just going to type in mine. And then hit the enter key. After a few seconds, what will happen is you'll get a nice welcome message like I've got just here. It tells you the last time you logged on, and, um, and you'll be able to then be logged onto the computer. So that now, from this point forward, any commands that I type into this window are actually being run on the web server over in the other room. I'm not actually using the computer that I'm sat at anymore. I'm now actually using another computer, and that's where Linux becomes really interesting. Let's take a look around and see what we can find. So I'll do an ls. I'll see there's two files in here. There's a file called readme. There's a directory called www. It's always a good idea to look in the files. So I'm going to cat that file. OK. It says any file placed in the www folder will be accessible at studentweb slash tilde your username. OK. That sounds interesting. Let's go into www. See what's in there. Now, at the moment, there's three files. Uh, yours might not have any, or might just have one file, actually. Uh, I've got cake2.jpg. That's an image from when I was messing around earlier. I've got index.html, and I've got this uh, index.html with a tilde on the end. That's an old temporary file. I might delete that while I'm here, actually. Uh, let's just get rid of you. That's better. So what I want to do is I want to edit my index page so that I can make some changes to it. And the text editor that I'm going to use is this Emacs program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Emacs, space, and then index.html, and hit enter. So after a few seconds, Emacs is going to load up, and it's going to load up the actual HTML source code that makes up this page. 
Now you've done a little bit of web design in the past. You might not remember it all, but you have done this historically, and so hopefully you might recognize some of the elements of what we've got here. There's an HTML tag at the top, so that tells the computer I want to work in HTML. There's a title tag here for computer science. Uh, and I've got a sentence, look, welcome to computer science. I've used an H1 to make the text a bit bigger. Uh, and then I've made a statement about computer science here as well. So that's the HTML that I've written. And we can actually see our page right now, live, on the uh, school intranet by opening another browser tab and visiting http colon slash slash student web slash tilde my username like that and hitting enter and surely enough here's my page welcome to computer science everybody loves computer science that one's a little bit bigger perfect exactly how I want it so we're editing this live so let's actually make a change just to demonstrate that we really are uh, working on that um, editor so I'm actually going to put another sentence underneath here and uh, let's go for um, almost around favorite drink. I like coffee very much. Maybe I'll make the word very in bold. Like that. And that's now been changed. To save, to save a file in Emacs, what you do is you use a, uh, a keyboard shortcut. So this will be the first one that you're going to learn right now. So your first keyboard shortcut is to save. And to do that, you do the following thing. Looking at your keyboard, you'll see in the very bottom left corner, you've got a key that says CTRL, the control key. Uh, and what we're going to do is in a moment, we're going to hold that down. And while we hold that down and not letting it go, we're going to tap the letter X. And then a second later, we're going to tap the letter S. So control X, control S. Okay, so I'm holding down control, I'm tapping X, and now I'm tapping S. And as I do that, you'll see at the bottom of the screen it says, I wrote for you uh, this file just here. That's now saved. And we can see the benefit of that straight away. I come back to my web browser, refresh the page. I like coffee very much in bold. It's been updated live. Let's just look at a couple more shortcuts that you might find useful. One of them is how do you quit Emacs and get back to the terminal? To quit and get back to the terminal, you do Control and X, Control and C. Okay, and that drops me back to the terminal at any time that I like. So that's, uh, that's two shortcuts that we can use. To move around a little bit faster, because up and down one thing at a time, you see the mouse here doesn't really do anything. It colors the screen in white on this machine, but it doesn't actually make any difference. Um, to move around a little bit, let's say I wanted to get across to the end of this line, add lots and lots of text on it. You can use another keyboard shortcut, which is to hold down the Alt key. Uh, you'll see it's just to the left of the space bar. Hold that down with your left hand, and you can tap F to jump forward one word. That's quite handy, isn't it? And you can also use Alt B, to jump back one word. So that saves you a little bit of time when you're navigating around. You can jump immediately to the end of a line by doing Control E, that jumps straight to the end of a line. And for reasons I've never fully understood, you can jump to the beginning of a line with Control A, like that. Control A, Control E, Alt F, Alt B. Uh, what else did we have? We have Control X, Control S to save, Control X, Control C to quit. So with just those few um, keyboard shortcuts, you can actually edit any text file that you want, so web pages and Python programs and things like that incredibly quickly. So it does mean as well, if you wanted to, you can actually start publishing and producing uh, homework tasks for us in computer science to the web. So you can actually hand in a URL, a web link, that we could look at to assess your work, which I think is really, really cool. So that's the Emacs text editor. Let's take a look at the badge tasks for this week. To get the silver, what I want you to do is just, um, in Notepad, that would do it, just write a little tutorial of how to get to this point and be able to edit files. Okay. Uh, to get the gold, what I'd like you to do is to research how cut, copy, and paste all work. It's got a different name in Linux, okay, so uh, you'll find that out for yourself when you get there. And uh, if you're feeling really, really enthusiastic, you'd always try a platinum task as well, which is to learn how to uh, edit, save, and quit using the other text editor, uh, VI or Vim, is the other version of it as well. Um, that is a tricky little challenge, but uh, I'll be impressed if you can do it. Just as a treat as well, when you are using Emacs, have a go at reading this section here. There are actually some nice 1970s games that you can play uh, within Emacs as well, which are quite cool. So you might want to check them 